So we're going to start out one of my uh, one of my, my most favoriteest. I know that's not right English, Mr. Pan. Verses 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, verse 17. I just can't help it. So let's start there. And th this uh, it's a little message I put together about six, uh, a little over six years ago and was going back through some notes and I, I've overlooked it a bunch of times, but, uh, but for tonight, that's kind of what the Lord pointed me to. But if we're going to talk about the battle, uh, the constant battle, the constant need of renewal. And, and that's in mind, heart, and soul. Everything together. And that produces strength. The 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh, you know, we ought to have that memorized by now, right? Therefore, if any man, if any person be in Christ, that's the first thing. There is no other name, no, under, no other way to, to, to salvation. He must be in Christ. So if any person, any man, be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And that's, you know, people sometimes will question, question their salvation. And I guess maybe nearly every one of us as a Christian have at some point or another kind of question because of a decision that we made or, or didn't make or, or whatever. And, but we, need, we, we have to look at the overall picture. You know, I tell people come to me, a lot of times people come and says, I just don't think I'm saved, Brother Jason. And, and, uh, and we we'll always talk, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's go back to, to, to when you thought you got saved and, and, and look at that trend. And, you know, has God made you a new creation? See, we're, we're not perfect yet. We have a perfect Savior, but we're not perfect yet. You know, that's that, that sanctification process. See, salvation is one and done. Sanctification is a process to grow, we mature. And, and so he makes us a new, a new creature. And old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. And, and, you know, has there been a change in your life? Has there been a desire shift in your life? You know, I had a desire at, at one point when I was in college, you know, to, to, to just, just act like an idiot, right? Party, drink, cut up, do dumb. And I had a, but I had a desire to do that. And God took all that away and he gave me a new desire because he made me a new creation. And, and sometimes, though, sometimes we, we easily forget sometimes how we were. You know, at work, we like to say, oh, he's done. He done forgot where he come from. Or she forgot where she come from. You know, somebody's moved way up in management or whatever, and, and they forgot what it was like to be down here on with the boots on the ground. And, and sometimes us Christians are that way too. We forget. We forget the, the, the bad decisions we made after we got saved even. And, and, and we forget, and we look at people, and, and we, we start condemning, and we start judging, and we forget we ain't perfect still. Even yet, but God has made us a new creation. All your desires should have changed in a direction towards Christ. Not saying that everything you were before was bad, um, but, but there should be a different desire for Christ. So, uh, you know, God's not finished. And I just want to read the notes here because it, it's written really well. Um, it says Christians are brand new people on the inside, right? We, we have the Holy Spirit within us. Gives us new life. We're not the same anymore. We're not reformed or rehabilitated or re-educated. We're new. We're a new creation is what the Bible tells us. And we're living in union with Christ. We're not merely turning over a new leaf. We're beginning a new life under a new master. That is where we've got to be. That is what we've got to see. So God's not finished working in this world. God is not finished with you. He absolutely is not. Don't ever think, just like we, we mentioned here a minute ago, if you can take another breath, you have yet another opportunity. You have another opportunity. Don't, don't ever let the devil convince you, well, you have ruined it now. Get up. Now, now, now there, there, may, there may very well be consequences for, for choices we've made that, that we can't change, right? We can choose our choice, but we can't. Uh, the consequences, and I mean, David, David is a perfect example of that. Because of some of his poor choices. But, but, but he kept looking forward. So God's not finished though. How we face the future and how we make decisions are based on what we believe about God. And what we believe about ourselves. We can say God is in control. 
but our lives often strongly suggest that we don't totally buy it. And, and, and again, it's like a lot of the stuff I see today. You know, I see people, and, and I see some of both, you know. Um, I see people that, that ha have come closer to Christ. And then I see people that, that, that I thought were close to Christ. That, that sure looks like they've got uh, some space in between that ought not to be there. And we're not acting like the way we ought to act. But we must renew our strength. And it's regularly. I mean, it, and we talked about, you know, going to the gym. We talked about that. Beverly's not here tonight, so I can't pick on her. But if, if, if all you do is go and bench press once a week, Nikki, right? All you're going to do is get sore again every time. You're never going to work out of it. You're never going to get any stronger. You're never going to accomplish anything other than somebody saw you in the gym. And that's how I feel like a lot of Christians are, right? They just think, well, if I come every now and then, I can say I've been. And, and, but but, but we, we have to go and we have to do things the right way for the right reasons. I mean, we've got to get into the Word of God and it is regular that is what, this is a midweek recharge, is what it is. Amen. A midweek recharge. And, and, you know, there's so many opportunities to fellowship and grow. You know, we had, we played, a, I, I, I was, Melissa was texting me on a, a Monday. Well, when are you going to get here? When are you going to get here? And I think it, it wasn't because she missed me so much. I think it was because she wanted to make sure I was going to be there for the Incredible game. <laughs> and so we'd have enough players. So I, I came, I, I got off the airplane, I rushed home, I threw my shorts on, and I hauled britches up to the, uh, the, the game so I could play incredible ball. And me, me and Kristen had the outfield locked up, right? And, but man, what fellowship though. It was, uh, John Fox can run, y'all. That boy, he can get after it. But man, just so many opportunities to grow in Christ, to, 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 to lift each other up, to have fun together. Because so many of us, what we, you know, we just, we, we act like it, it ain't no fun being a Christian. And then people see that, they're like, what? what's all about that? I, I had a blast. Uh, my legs are sore, but, but I had a blast at that game. It's constant. We've got to regularly grow and renew ourselves. Let's look at Romans. And, and pretty much all of these uh, are going to be real familiar verses that, that we've been through. I preached on multiple times, used them a bunch of times. Um, but, you know, I've, I've read through cover to cover here, and, and it, it's, you know, it's a common theme in every book in the Bible. Anybody realize that? You know, Jesus talked about the same thing that Paul talked about, that, that Joseph talked about, that Peter talked about, that it, it's, it's, it's all his word, right? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, the word tells us, and, and this is a whole chapter and a section talking about how to behave and personal responsibility and being a living sacrifice. It says, I beseech you, therefore. So he's talking to the Christians here. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. A lot of lost people read the Bible. And, and they say, I just don't get it. Get saved. And then come back and let's talk. And, and the Bible is written predominantly to a Christian. Right. Now, now it's written for a lost person. But it's predominantly a letter to a Christian. So right here is one of those times. It's very, very specific. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. He is not talking to lost people right here. Um, he's talking to brothers and sisters in Christ. By the mercies of God, that you present your bodies at a, a living sacrifice. Holy, see, because there's there only one that died and was the perfect sacrifice. So, so you don't have to worry about that. You need to worry about being a living sacrifice. So he says, you, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is... He said, that's just a reasonable, reasonable service. And then he takes it a little bit further. And then, be not conformed to this world. And I'm telling you, the, 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 the devil is all up in this, this mayhem right now. He wants the church to turn on itself. I mean, what better way to, 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 to kill our witness than to do it from within the church? That, that, that's where it happens. I mean, you go and, uh, you know, you, you, you read about any old battle, you know, in these big castles. And there was always a cornerstone uh, in these builds. And Jesus is referred to as our cornerstone because without him, you have no foundation. So in, in a, in, and you see it portrayed in a lot of old movies and stuff. And they get to the, the cornerstone, the pillar, you know, the one that's holding all the weight. If we get that blown. You know, as when, when they went after the Twin Towers, 
That was by design. They knew exactly how to hit that building to make it fall the way it fell. That, that's all by design. And, and, you know, is Jesus your cornerstone? Is he your pillar? Is he your go-to when things are good or when things are bad? If you're not careful, you're going to be conformed to this world. And you have a lot of opportunity right now because there's a lot of negative. Lots of negative out there. And, and I mean, you watch any uh, movie of when it, where it's got a group of like superheroes, right? And what's the bad guy always try to do? He always tries to get contention between the good guys. And when he does, it creates this negative energy. I mean, it's, it's, it's classic. It's a classic move. It's in, it's in all kind of movies. But, but that's, that's the devil's best play. I mean, what did he do? He went to Eve. And, and, and it got her messed up. And then, and then Eve went to Adam and got him messed up. And then, then they blamed, you know, then everybody started pointing all their fingers, right? Well, God, it's that woman. And, and she said, well, it's the devil. And, and then just, and then it's still going today. Get the contention started. And, and those seeds of contention uh, will get planted right here in our church if we're not careful. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Only way that's going to happen is to get in the Word. That you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, and people say, well, well, you know, Brother Jason, you put a lot of emphasis on studying. So, you know, and some people will, will take that, maybe take that wrong and say, well, all you worry about studying the Bible, what about, what about getting saved? But if you're truly saved and you're right with God, you're going to want to study the Bible. So if you say you're saved and you don't have a desire to study the Bible, it's one of two things. You're lying or you are in a bad state of your Christian life that you don't want to be with brothers and sisters in Christ, studying the Word of God. And, and people, that, that's, you know, take it up with God, right, Brother Goins? Amen. If you don't like it, take it up with, with God. But he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. God never, ever promised you happiness. He promised you joy. He promised you peace. But see, happiness is based on what happens, based on circumstances. Joy is not. It's based on Christ. So just a, a few of the notes. So sacrifice was important, uh, but even in the Old Testament, God made it clear Obedience from the heart was much more important. And, and that's uh, over in Samuel. Let's look at uh, Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22 real quick. There was a little bit of getting hung up in the uh, sacrificial system. So 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 22. Then Samuel said, Had the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of God. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of ram. See, the sacrificial system, I mean, that was a major, major deal back then. So if, if I could compare that to something nowadays, it would be, well, I mean, I come to church every Sunday morning. I mean, my goodness, is that not enough sacrifice? And that's, you know, that's kind of the mentality we get. And, 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 you know, God says, well, if that's the way you feel about it, then stop coming. Because you ain't getting nothing out of it anyway. And that's where, so they were, they were really hung up on the sacrificial system. And, you know, we, we read uh, in the scriptures where, you know, King Saul had uh, not listened. And, and, and that was one of his excuses, right, for hanging on to some of the animals and things. And, and he says, oh, we need some to sacrifice, right? Because sacrifice is important. And, but God told you to get rid of everything. And sometimes we'll do that. We like to hang on to some of those little things in our life from our past. Some of those little maybe habits. Some of those little things that we like to do. Places we like to go that we know are no good. God says you need. I told you to get rid of all of it. Every bit of it. All of it. Get it out. So he says, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, as important as the sacrificial system was in, in Samuel's time. And all the whole sacrificial system did was point to one. It pointed to Jesus. See, they kept having to redo them sacrifices and go over and do it over and do it over and do it over because it wasn't sufficient. It pointed to Jesus Christ. So he said, we need to, we need to obey. 
we need to obey. All right, let's look at uh, Luke chapter 9. Verse 1. Luke chapter 9, we're going to look at verses 23 through 25. This is one of them, them daily verses. Luke chapter 9, verse 23 through 25. The Word of God says, And He said unto them all, If any man... And, and I, I like to point out because I, I just sometimes I, I notice it, sometimes I don't. In, in, if you have a King James Bible, if you don't, that's fine. Uh, but in the King James, it, it says, and he said unto them, them is in italics, uh, which means they added that word um, to, to make a little more emphasis. And it says, if any man, the word man is, is italicized. So if, just say we take those out. Just if, And he said to all, if any will come after me, some, some you know, and uh, some people try to make a, a little more big deal out of that than what it is, but so if any will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. You know, I prayed uh, early in my Christian walk, I prayed real hard to forget some of the things that I had done that I knew was very ungodly. And uh, God never, ever let me forget because he uses that. He says, I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to remember who you were. He said, I don't want you to forget where you come from. So, so don't, don't be ashamed of your past, you know? <coughs> it, 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 you know, don't, don't try to, you know, your past may be the very thing that helps somebody else get out of theirs. And, and so, you know, God, God uses all kinds. I mean, you, you think about Paul, some of the places that he went to after he got saved. And I can't, right now, can't remember the scripture, but they're, they're, they didn't want, they were scared to death of it. So wait, that joker was here killing Christians, and then he's preaching? I mean, can you imagine somebody getting fresh out of prison for a murder? And they get out, and they become a preacher. I wonder how many churches would vote them in. Mm. Yeah. See, we, we look at things so much differently than the way the Lord looks at things, and that's why uh, we need to judge, right? Luke chapter 9, starting verse 23 again. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. You know, we kind of hang on to things, but whosoever will lose, lose his life for my sake. The same shall save it. See, a lot of people come in and they walk the aisle. Maybe they audibly profess Christ. Maybe they get baptized. But they didn't do it for Christ. He says, for whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. See, people, a lot of people walk the aisle. They didn't do it for his sake. They did it for their own. And he said, if you did it for your own, you're going to lose that. He said, if you did it for mine, you're saved. It is saved. And he says, don't, don't do things for the wrong reason. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world? Lose himself and be cast away. Another scripture, uh, another one of the, the uh, books, words are a little bit different, you know. If we gain the whole world, lose our own soul, you know, whatever we really want. But here it says, for what is a man advantaged? Now, what have you gained? If you gain the whole world and lose himself uh, or be cast away. So, Luke has some, some, some good guidance here. It says, Christians follow their Lord by imitating His life, by obeying His commands. And to take up the cross means to deny selfish desires, to use our resources of time and money our own way, and to choose our own direction in life. Following Christ is costly now, but in the long run, it is well worth the pain and effort. I was reading uh, a quote, I think it was Adrian Rogers' quote. He said, you know, a lot of people get hung up and have issues with things in the Bible uh, that they don't understand. He says, man, he says, I don't have any, any trouble with what I don't understand. He said, it's what I do that gives me trouble because we need to follow it. You know, we need to do what the Word says. But, so if this present life is, is most important to you, you will do everything you can to protect it. You will not do anything that might endanger your safety, health,
health, or comfort. By contrast, if following Jesus is most important, you will find yourself in unsafe, unhealthy, and uncomfortable places. We're, we're getting there. There are Christians over in Afghanistan being killed right, right now. But if they're caught with... Uh, one, one of the, the little news things I read was if, if they were caught with the Bible app on their phone. Um, maybe have stuff cut off, maybe killed. And I, I, I saw a meme, I don't know who made it, but buddy, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty deep, a lot of truth in it. It says, Afghanistan, we're going to go to church and maybe murder. And it says, in America, we're going to go to church unless I'm tired, unless there's a ball game, unless it's raining, unless it's... And, and that is so true. We are so spoiled. We are so complacent in America when it comes to the church and the importance of the church and the importance of our life in Christ. But it might be made there, 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 I think there will be a time when we end up in unsafe, unhealthy, and uncomfortable places because of our faith. You'll risk death, but you will not fear it because you know Jesus will raise you to eternal life. Nothing material can compensate for the loss of eternal life. Jesus' disciples are not uh, to use their lives on earth for their own pleasure, but to spend them serving God and people. So good, good direction for each one of us to, to look at, to follow, and uh, you know, start working towards. Now let's look at uh, John, book of John, chapter 12. And I think we'll probably hold up there. John chapter 12, looking at verses uh, let's go, yeah, 23 through 26. Yeah, John 12, 23 through 26. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come, the Son of Man should be glorified. You see that? Yeah, that's the right verse. Sorry. So the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Very, very, I say unto you, except a corn or grain of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So we've got to die to self. We've got to die to self. I mean, you take a piece of corn and you throw it in the fridge or the freezer and preserve it forever, it'll never produce another ounce of fruit. But you plant the seed, the seed actually dies and out of that death uh, comes new growth. I, I saw a picture here a while back. I may have already mentioned it to you. And it, 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 uh, it, was, a, it was a little meme. And it said, if, if salvation had a picture. And it was a giant stump. It was dead. But right out of the middle of it was a new tree growing up. And it was just a beautiful picture. And, it said, and, and that was the thing. If, if salvation had a picture, this could be it. New growth out of that dead stump. That is, that is, that is what we can be for sure. So again, uh, it, it, we, we get in similar to what we read there just a second ago. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto a life eternal. And verse 26, And if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am... There shall also my servant be, and if any man serve me, him will my father honor. So we've got to die to ourselves, and, and and you know, and a lot of times we'll, we'll argue with God, but but, but God, I, I want to do this. God, I, I want to live this lifestyle. God, I want to make this choice. And God says, okay, but you're going to have consequences because of your choices. Now, now um, if we make good choices, then odds are there going to be good consequences. We make poor choices. There are going to be poor consequences. You know, if, if, if I could put my finger on one thing I want the church to get mad about, it'd be what was uh, authorized in 1973. And we're, we're, we're nearing 70 million babies in the United States of America. 70 million. Are we really concerned about health in the United States? 70 million. Not quite 70, but we're in the upper 60s. I don't remember the exact number. Of babies that have been killed. And... Um, that's what the church, that is the blood stain that the United States has on it. It ain't COVID. It ain't the flu. It ain't cancer. It, it, it ain't people getting robbed. It's killing babies. 
You, you want to talk about saving a life. But see, the, the, the Lord looks at, at ours. You know, we get all about ourselves sometimes. And again, he repeats just like we read over there in Luke. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. And that, that, is, that is a picture of just turning everything over to Christ. Giving it all to him. Letting him have his will and his way. And, and we can't be, you know, any of us that have had kids, you've heard your kids say, but I want them. But I want them. Or but I want it. Or, but I don't want it. And, and, you know, and we know what's best and we try to help. And, and you know, when God's like that with us, we're, we're a lot like little kids sometimes as Christians. And, and God says, fine, go do it then. But I tried to show you different. And, and then, we, then we stub our toe and we say, that hurts. God says, I knew it was going to. I tried to tell you. But we need to focus our life on him. Read verse 26 again. Any man serve me. So the, the, if, if we serve him, we say we serve him, then we're going to follow him. And then he says, you know, I'm going to be there with you. As long as you're serving me, I'm going to be there with you. And that's what that verse is talking about there. So many believe that Jesus uh, came for the Jews only. But when Jesus said, if any man serve me, let him follow me. He was talking to the Greeks at the point there. And then, and when they, you know, they're, they're, we talk about division and racism and all these things. And it was alive in here too. And that's where many times Jesus threw that out. And he said, y'all need to get over all this. He talked, some of the disciples had problems. Man, they didn't like them Gentiles. You know, uh, uh, you know the, the Ninevites, more people didn't like them. Right? And, and it was all in there. And Jesus said, you need to get over all your traditions. You need to get over all your feelings. And you need to serve me. No matter what, no matter where, no matter when, we need to serve the Lord. And, and we're going to stop right there, but I'm going to give you a little uh, homework. If you want to look at Romans chapter 6, and uh, I'll just read chapter 6. We won't look, we just at about six, five or six verses there. And then also uh, Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, if you want to read that one, then that's where we'll pick up next Wednesday. But we have to realize we cannot do it on our own. It is a constant battle of renewal. It is a daily thing. We, we, we read in there about taking up our cross daily. We, we read in there about dying to self. And, and we, we have to take these things you know, spiritually liberal. You know, spiritually literal. We need to die to ourselves, and we need to put Christ first. All right, let's stand. We'll be dismissed. Apologies, brothers, please.